come to center, led by Tredeen, around Hutchison, shoots his shoulder! Thomas Tredeen walked in on the left side. And Brodeur cleared it away, and Vancouver's nil, gives it to Brosser, he's bumped by Gardner. Here we go from the face off in the Canuck zone, Doug Wilson to Preston. Preston gets away from Gradeen, cuts in front, centered one, a shot, a star! Laskowski! And it's tied 1-1. Sharply feeds to Barr. He breaks through. Backhander, Brodeur! Another save. I believe his third big save of this period off to Barr. And now some hijinks in behind the Vancouver goal. Secord and Tiger Williams. If you were a promoter, you could have promoted that match before this series ever began and predicted that they would meet. Well, Don King probably would love to get a hold of those two guys because they're certainly two aggressive hockey players. They're both leaders on their hockey club in respective ways. Al Secord, amazingly this year, led his hockey club in not only as far as the penalty minutes go as far as being the policeman, but also in goals. He had just an amazing year. Here's Neil for Vancouver in across the line, but Williams was in ahead of the play. And now Neil and Secord push at each other. Over comes Hutchison. Williams comes in there. Now Hutchison throws a punch at Neil over top of the linesman. And they have to be restrained by the linesman. Gardner number 14. Waving it for Marsh. Here is Marsh, a backhander, and Brodeur the save on the short side. Now Campbell and Marsh get into it back of the goal. Colin Campbell and Peter Marsh. Well, and the linesmen try and fry them apart. Colin Campbell's certainly been in a few fights in his National Hockey League career of some nine years. He and Peter Marsh going at it here. Colin has to be considered, even though he does not have the size, he's definitely a policeman on whichever team that he plays at. He'll stand up to, to anyone in the National Hockey League, regardless if he's a foot taller. Time to play. Time to play. This is the second time that Campbell has been involved in a scrap. He drew five minutes earlier for his exchange with Peter Marsh. Well, they went at it before, and they're going at it again. Both two, both players certainly very aggressive, and certainly both very good with their fist, Dan. The two linesmen stand back, and let Secord and Williams go to it, but for the most of it, they have been in a close clinch. Now, Williams lands a quick right. You know, they're almost nose to nose here. They're kind of laughing at each other. They're not really, nobody's getting in any punches, but boy, they're still waltzing around there. I don't know what tune this is that the organist is playing, Dan, but. Decord of Chicago now with some right hand. Now Williams plans the right hand back. Secord and Dave Tiger Williams. I think now would be a good time to break it up because they're probably so tired they'd be glad to part up with it. Buck slides into the Vancouver zone. Colin Campbell back to get it. Takes a hit from Mulvey. Fairly defensive role covering guys throughout the both series thus far. Now we have Savard and Steiner getting their sticks up as we were about to have a face out. Bob Pulford is telling Dennis Savard as he calls him over to the bench. Well, here we see the head flashing. Jerry Miner giving Savard a push, saying, you want to go into the penalty box with me? Well, both Miner and Savard are topped out of there. Now, Secor gave Miner a push, so Tiger Williams says all face-off against Secor. Meanwhile, on the face-off, it's going to be Sharpley and Moline. Now, they have Miner and Savard having words again. Well, I don't like the looks of Tiger Williams and Al Secord facing off together because that's going to spell trouble.
When you can't get the puck dropped, I guess you call that the definition of intensity. <laughs> Comes all the way to center. They roll Hallward, should have played the puck, so there'll be no icing. Roland Candle back to get it. And then Preston went sliding into the board. Back first, and he's injured. He took a tumble and then slid into the board back first. And he's hurt. Well, there's probably no question that he's hurt because, boy, did he go flying into those boards. And that back, I'll tell you, let's watch Preston. He's really got ahead of steam up, but he trips and falls. Higgins dumps it in. Eldebrick back for Vancouver, just played it off the boards and down the ice. To Mulvey. Mulvey trying to go around Lindgren. Mulvey centered it, Brodeur cleared it away. To Sharpley, who's checked, Beamster has to hustle back. Cleared it around to Fox on the board. He cleared it into the hot zone. Here's Esposito out of the net to clear it to center. Delivers a new goal stick to Esposito. The Chicago Blackhawks won, the Vancouver Canucks won. We have had no scoring since the 10-11 mark of the first period. As we see the puck dropped and the second sudden death is underway. On the faceoff, Savard got the draw. The Canucks get the puck, however. Moline shoots, blocked in front of the net. Vancouver dropping it back, broken up by Secord. Now the Canucks center. There's Moline's shot blocked at the defense. Doug Wilson around to the boards to Sharpley. Sharpley losing it as he's tied up. Miner back to Lindgren, a drive. That's deflected off Wilson just wide. Now Savard trying to clear it. Snaps held it in. Harold Snaps shoots one. Esposito the same near shoot. He scores! Jim Nilo has won game one of this series for the Vancouver Canucks on a rebound. And the Canucks in two overtime periods on a goal by Jim Neal, who was acquired by Vancouver in a trade from the St. Louis Blues right at the trading deadline. Gets the rebound and wins it for Vancouver. Well, let's watch it, Dan. The big shot here by Harold Schnepp. But watch where Jim Neal, he fights to get loose. He gets that rebound, and he puts it right up and over Tony Esposito's glove. Let's see it from another angle. Schnepp getting off the initial shot. The rebound's going to come out, but Neal is going to muscle the Chicago defender right here, and he wins that battle, puts the puck up and over the disappointed Tony Esposito. Jim Neal, second goal of the playoffs, 8.58, the time of the sudden death goal in the second overtime.